Hi, we're Team 16629. I'm Melissa Lee. I'm Nolan Gao. I'm Himal. I'm Nathan Wei. And I'm Nicholas. And we're from Beaufort High School representing the state of Florida. We'd love to discuss the viability of the hottest new green transport, e-bikes. So the big question that we wanted to answer with our paper was, what is the potential of e-bikes as an emerging market in sustainable transport in the US? So we answered this question obviously in three parts. In part one, we wanted to predict the e-bike sales growth in two and five years. In question two, we looked at the consumer and the main drivers in um, consumer purchase of e-bikes. In question three, identifying the social, environmental, and health impacts of e-bike purchase. So the first question we tackled was the road ahead, um, which deals with short and mid-term projections of e-bike sales growth, specifically focusing on two and five years from now. So uh, we assume that existing post-pandemic sales trends will sustain over the next five years. And our justification for this is that the pandemic fundamentally altered the buying behavior of individuals, and thus it is likely that current trends will persist, at least in the short run. So we also noticed that e-bike sales were growing at an increasing rate, so we considered the viability of both a linear and log linear model, with the dependent variable in the log linear model being uh, the natural logarithm of annual e-bike sales. Uh, this figure shows our two models, with the linear model on the left and the log linear model on the right. And as we can see, the log linear model had a high R squared value of 0.94, indicating strong correlation between the variables and a dependable model. Uh, this is a visualization of our model converted to exponential form. And from this, we see that two years from now, in 2025, we predict that 1.5 million e-bikes will be sold, while five years from now, in 2028, we predict that 2.7 million e-bikes will be sold. So it is important to note that while our model may be accurate in the short run, its exponential nature limits its ability to extrapolate in the long term. For example, we may expect that in the long run, uh, the sales curve may look rather logistic. Now we move on to our second model. Yeah, so let's shift our gears and uh, from macroscopic views and drill it down to the consumer. So in question two, our main, our model was based on the assumption that e-bikes substitute other forms of transportation. So the factors that we were interested in or factors that relate to the differences in mode of transportation. So we looked at transportation costs, we looked at vehicular upkeep, and we looked at the cost value of commute time. In addition, our model internalized parameters such as the differences between public transit and uh, car usage, or remote work versus physical work, as well as stratifying individuals based on their urban or rural um, categorizations. So as a summary, our model employed a Monte Carlo simulation to use um, <laughs> to estimate e-bike consumers and looking at the cost of each factor of interest in order to see the cost for each consumer. We ran three simulations of size 10,000 in the years of 2005, 2010, and 2021. So these are our assumptions. Our, the most notable ones are that people may tr make rational decisions. So in that if a, cons a consumer would see um, a savings by switching to an, their mode of transportation to an e-bike, then obviously that would be a reason for them to switch and purchase an e-bike. Additionally, uh, another important factor is that each hour spent commuting has the value of a worker's hourly wage. And essentially what that means is that since we want to uh, use all the factors um, in the same way, we needed a way to standardize all the factors. So with the different units, we decided to employ a monetary metric so that we could easily compare the factors. So with the cost value of commute time, we employed the worker's hourly wage to determine that. All right, so the first factor we sought to quantify was transportation costs. And because transportation cost depends on the mode of transportation and distance, we use a piecewise function. So for individuals that commute via car, um, we simply calculated the yearly cost of gas by multi multiplying various parameters such as um, the price of gas, which we got from the M3 data sheet, uh, fuel efficiency um, for the average idling car, uh, commute time, 
which we found from a distribution, and then days worked per year. And then for individuals that commute via public transport, we simply took an average, and then for those who remote, who, um, remote work, it was just zero. And then next, for calculating the savings from uh, commute time, we just did the difference in commute time without and with the e-bike times the hourly wage, uh, which was also taken from a distribution and days worked per year. And so finally, vehicular upkeep was simply calculated as a difference in constants for average values of upkeeps for the, um, the individual's current mode of transportation and e-bike. So for example, for car users, this would be about 7,200 um, for the cost of car upkeep minus 450 for e-bike upkeep. All right, so here are the results from our Monte Carlo model. The red bars represent savings in vehicular upkeep if an individual were to switch to e-bikes. And as we can see, in 2021, three in four Americans found that vehicular upkeep was the highest impact factor meaning that vehicular upkeep of these three factors offered the greatest level of savings. This suggests that upkeep costs could be an important underlying factor for growth in e-bike sales, as car drivers would basically be able to recoup the initial cost of an e-bike within months. We also saw that um, commute time costs may actually be a deterrent because e-bikes would have um, longer duration of trips. And finally, um, even after splitting our Monte Carlo simulation into both rural and urban settings, these trends were consistent in both. One limitation we'd like to acknowledge was the use of a nominal idling value of fuel efficiency in our uh, initial model that we submitted. Um, as we can see here, uh, the higher value of driving fuel efficiency would produce savings of around $2,000 per year rather than 50 but it still remained the same that upkeep costs were the highest impact factor for about three and four Americans. And then another limitation we'd like to recognize that this is a consumer focused model, so it does not account for some of those harder to quantify factors and commercial e-bike usage or bike share programs. All right. All right, let's move on to part three. So in part three, we were asked to determine how increased e-bike usage would more affect like the um, wider world. So we chose to consider three factors, um, carbon emissions, traffic congestions, and also health-related factors, specifically increased fatalities due to car, um, vehicular accidents. So we assumed that every um, e-bike purchase would lead to a new e-bike user, and using this assumption, we created three models to determine these factors. So as we stated before, e-bikes are substitutes to other forms of transportation, so we can quantify the change in carbon emissions due to the decrease um, of car, in car usage. Uh, we have three main assumptions for this model. Um, the first is that since bikes and e-bikes are very similar modes of transportation, we expect them to travel similar distances per year. Our other assumptions, we also assume that average yearly distance traveled by bikes will remain constant, and that the carbon emissions um, emitted by a car per mile driven would also remain constant. Uh, we were given data on the total miles traveled by bike per year, and we created a linear regression on this to determine the total number of miles traveled by bike in 2023. We then divided this by the total number of bike riders in the US to determine the average miles traveled by a single bike per year. Um, to simplify our calculations, we chose to um, calculate our interval in its one year equivalent. So we assume that if a bike is purchased in our interval, it's gonna be used every year after it's purchased. So for our interval, which we consider from 2023 to 2028, for example, the bike is bought in 2025, it's gonna contribute three equivalent e-bikes. But in, if the bike is bought in 2027, it's only con gonna contribute one bike. Additionally, e-bikes aren't gonna be perfect substitutes for a car, and we found that around 76% of trips taken by e-bike users were taken, um, would have been replaced by a car ride. So we multiply the total number of miles traveled by e-bike in this time period by 0.76 to determine the total number of car miles saved. We also found that the average carbon emissions of a car um, was 348 grams of carbon per mile driven. So multiplying by this yields us our total carbon savings. So in conclusion, our model found that over the next five years, e-bikes are gonna travel 18.67 billion miles, saving us a total of 7.16 million tons of carbon. So in our next model for the traffic congestion, we proceeded under the following assumptions. Um, in general, because our model seeks to predict changes in the near future, our assumptions are gonna reflect these desires. And so we're gonna hold road capacities constant and the number of motorized vehicles in the United States constant. 
Um, and in terms of our methodology, we first quantified traffic using the volume to capacity ratio. Um, and then we predicted um, the increase in e-bike sales using our part one model. And finally, we corresponded this increase in e-bike sales with the decrease in traffic by using um, vehicular usage data. So from our assumption, road capacity remains constant. Therefore, congestion is directly proportional to the number of cars. It's important to note that although e-bike usage doesn't completely eliminate one's contribution to traffic, we can still use our value as a reasonable upper bound for the reduction in um, traffic. So the number of people who no longer, who um, are gonna purchase e-bikes, delta P sub B, can simply be represented as a summation of our part one function, V of T, over the time interval of interest. Um, however, the number of people who switch to e-bikes is not the same as the number of people who are no longer contributing to traffic. Um, from the given data, only 75.6% of people travel in private motorized vehicles, which means only 75.6% of people switching to e-bikes are going to have an impact on traffic. So we can say the number of people who no longer contribute to traffic is 0.756 delta P sub B. Um, next, we wanted to correspond this increase in e-bikers with the decrease in traffic. So from this pie chart, uh, from the given data, this shows the vehicular usage habits of Americans, and we calculated the average occupancy of a private motorized vehicle to be 1.14, which means that um, since we have 0.756 fewer, uh, delta P sub B fewer passengers, this corresponds to 0.66 delta P sub B fewer vehicles on the road. And finally, now we're gonna calculate the proportional decrease in traffic. Um, from our assumption, since we held the cars constant at 300 million in the US, this gives us 2.2 times 10 to the negative nine delta P sub B um, in general for our model. And to make a specific prediction in the next five years, we can simply plug in the next five years into our model from part one, which yields 0 0.07. So our model predicts a 7% reduction in traffic congestion in the next five years due to increased e-bike usage. And our third model for question three was to estimate the health and safety benefit. So in order to do this, we, we found the number of mortalities that would be decreased with the switch to e-bikes. So in order to do so, we used a linear approximation between the fatality rate, the number of fatalities, and the number of effective e-bikes that would be increased in our five-year interval. And we compared that with the number of fatalities that would be um, associated with the decrease in car usage, which we calculated from a previous model. And therefore, when we subtract these two values, we get that 648 lives would be um, saved from the switch to e-bikes from cars. So in summary, for question three, we found that carbon emissions would be reduced by 7.8%. 16 million tons, which is a significant environmental benefit, as well as decreasing traffic by 7%, which although moderate could, is, could improve in quality of life and be a significant um, interest factor in urban planning, as well as saving 648 lives over five years um, due to the reduced um, car usages. So some of the limitations of our three factors were the fact that we only took cars into consideration because we thought that public transportation would remain constant and that we assumed that one e-bike was the equivalent of one person. So in conclusion, we found that the switch to e-bikes have positive environmental, uh, economic, and societal effects. So in part one, we found that e-bike sales would double by 2028. In question two, we found that low upkeep costs were um, the main driver in predicting e-bike growth. And in question three, we found that e-bikes reduce CO2 emissions, traffic congestion, and accident-related deaths. So thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Uh, special thanks to our coach, Mr. Liu. And we'll open up the floor for any questions now. I could start if you I could start with a question. So I, I really liked your model for part two because it was uh, you converted everything to dollars and it became like a financial question. One thing I'm trying to understand is how it, it jives with your exponential growth for part one. So um, if the if the cost is the driving factor, what changed in um, 2019 or 2018 whenever this curve started that um, made this factor come into play? So if e bikes were cheaper, why didn't we all switch? Okay, yeah, so one of the things that we saw um, in our one of our assumptions for question one was that pandemic 
um, the pandemic like altering the buying behavior of consumers. So one of the things we took into account for question two was remote versus physical work. And since we um, we used the distance to work as our metric for um, the distance traveled so that we could calculate the difference in commute times, we found that um, that was a factor that differed in 2021 as opposed to the other years where we took at in 2005 and 2010. Yeah, and so we can see in this table right here that there are significantly greater savings in commute, sorry, um, worse commute time from switches to e-bike in 2021. Um, and we estimate that a lot of that is due to people working from home after the pandemic. And one of the big reductions in terms of the cost of e-bikes themselves is that as um, they started becoming like more popular in the late 2010s, a lot of big companies started coming into the industry, which greatly reduced the cost of e-bikes and made it like affordable for an, a normal person to buy. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, in question two, what was the motivation uh, to use um, Monte Carlo simulations, and why do you choose to use 10,000 individuals in each run? Okay, so the motivation for using a Monte Carlo simulation is that our model is consumer focused. So we were looking at an individual and their decision making behavior um, in terms of the decision to switch to e bike. So that's how we were able to assess um, transportation upkeep and commute costs relatively um, and see which one would offer the greatest benefit or like the highest impact factor. Um, and then we looked at 10,000 individuals because um, it makes sense for like cities that are 100,000 people to assess like 10% of the population. Um, so yeah, we wanted to have a big number that was that made the simulation more robust, but also um, not getting like larger than that ten percent. I have a question. question. Can you show me the exponential? Um, right. So if you look at that coefficient there, it's ten to the minus one hundred and sixty-six. Did that give you any pause when you saw that the coefficient was that tiny? Not really, because as you see, we're plugging in the actual year here, so we're multiplying this to be like e to the 0.1917 times like 2,000 something, and that exponential factor is going to be a lot bigger. So it makes sense that our like pre-exponential coefficients be really small to balance it out. Right, and then you could have, um, and you could have done a model, for example, with 2012 replaced by zero or 12 and all these sorts of things, right? Yes. And if you don't mind, another question unrelated to this is one fundamental assumption was that um, the consumers were rational, right? Yes. So what would, you know, if you had the time and the scope to do some sort of model of non-rational um, behavior model, what would you, what kind of factors would you put in? Well, the biggest thing would be, I guess, availability of data for people who actually switch to e-bikes. Because, for example, our model still looks at people who live 30 miles away from work in rural settings and evaluates an e-bike for them when really we don't see those people as um, like potential consumers. So um, instead of using like the rational consumer design, we would love to use like data on people who bought sales and then assess like what those savings would have been retrospectively. Yeah, so additionally, some of the factors that we didn't consider that we saw were uh, suggested in the problem was, for example, like the coolness factor. So that would be like how trendy e-bikes are. And uh, that would also be like the health benefit that would be associated from an increase in e-bike usage. So those are things that we wanted to include, but given the time restraint, we couldn't. So I think in the future, if we did decide to model those, um, since we don't, ha we would need to collect more data on the buying behavior of consumers based on those factors. But I think um, each consumer for each of those factors, it would be um, a different uh, weight of importance to them. So we could try a Monte Carlo with like weights as for a different factor. Thanks so much. That brings us to the end of the question period. So let's thank the team again. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.